Anthropology is a lot about what it means to be a human being, but that is what it means to be a social being, how you manage the business of life together. Anthropology is important because it's the study of everything that it is to be a human, whether it's human culture, uh, social or material culture, whether it's the biology of being humanist, it's all about what makes us be, be human and that is never going to stop being relevant. It's, it's just the broadest study I can imagine. Biological anthropologists uh, basically are in three areas. They look at uh, human evolution and um, sort of fossil evidence, and that also extends into looking at forensic type evidence. Uh, so looking at what killed people, essentially. It's hard to tell whether all of his teeth are erupted because he's lost so many in, of them in life. Do you see all of this bone we here? Yes, yeah, that's quite right. Old. So that is not a tooth that has dropped out after death. That is a tooth that was lost in life. Then we're quite interested in human sexual behavior and sort of branching into evolutionary psychology. So for example, I'm quite interested in reproductive scheduling, um, when to have a baby, how many babies that you should have, how many can you afford to have in terms of your time and energy, and also when should you start. So I'm quite interested in teenage mothers. Why maybe do they start having children at a younger age and what are some of the reasons behind that? from an evolutionary perspective. Biological anthropology is the study of humans from both a physiological and psychological perspective, trying to understand how we have adapted to the world around us. So what I want to know is, on balance, are you an advertiser or are you a seeker? And then we're also interested in primates, and so there are a number of people in anthropology departments that study primates to try and understand our human evolution and human behaviour. One of the things we can do is look at non-human primates and use them to give us some understanding into human evolution and why humans are like they are. And human evolution focuses on the last seven million years of, 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 of the development of our own species and it, it looks at some of the key aspects of, uh, of where biology starts to meet culture, where we start to manipulate our own environment rather than the environment manipulating us. But it also addresses where we're going, why we do the certain things we do. And it's a fascinating subject for anyone who's interested in, in why we are. If you don't study primates, you have nothing to compare humans to without a comparative perspective. There's, there's nothing to, to identify why humans are special or what is special about humans. If humans were like monkeys, we'd all leave the lecture theatre together, all go home together, all go to school together, all travelling around in a big bunch. We don't. We split up and move in different groups. We change who we're hanging out with any particular time. Chimps is the same way. And understanding how that kind of social system works, understanding how people negotiate relationships in those kinds of social systems is core to understanding humans. Field work is long, hard and arduous and it's lots of, lots of time tracking through a forest trying to find chimps and then trying to keep up with them once you find them. Uh, getting up in the morning when it's dark, fumbling around, putting equipment together, getting out into the forest and then finding some chimps. And then once you find the chimps, staying with them, watching what they do, record what they do, spending as long with them as possible, maybe all day, moving around the forest, recording their behaviour and then analysing that later on. Biological anthropology is important because it allows us to understand what sort of animals we are and how and why we evolved and allows us to see what's special about people in comparison to other animals but also what makes us very similar to other animals and how we fit more generally into the biological world. It is the history of our species and I think it's really important to understand both how your body and mind works, why it works that way, why you have the preferences you do and why uh, you act the way you do essentially. The best thing about anthropology is that it is comparative. So we study particular societies in very much detail, but we also try to keep the big picture in mind. I suppose social anthropologists look at human sociality in its, its broadest sense, so looking at people's, the relationships between people and their environments and so on. You, almost anything can be anthropology, and indeed, in anthropology departments, you'll find people who study almost anything. Cultural heritage issues, really, uh, anthropology of landscape and memory. Transnationalism and migration, but specifically I've worked with European and American expatriates. Why white working class boys are failing so badly at school. The unique aspects of, of being human, human cultures, human beliefs, human practices. Representations of bodies 
um, across kind of time and in, geographically. Working with sculptors who make um, stone images that get turned into gods. Museum collections and um, ethnographic objects. How do we make up? How do we change our hair? What clothes do we wear? How do we hold ourselves? How, how are we? How do we go about in the world? You imagine it being just kind of like looking at um, primitive people and then seeing what they get up to and then you realise that these kind of concepts are very outmoded and, and really that the kind of richness of other cultures has a lot to teach you about your own culture um, and how much of your own culture you have to try and put aside when you go and study these other cultures. The thing about fieldwork is why it's useful to go to another culture and spend time there is you can learn certain ideas, you go into a new place. Nowadays we're all aware of different cultures, we see different people and you get a certain idea of the differences. It might be difference of dress, difference of ways of speaking. And so we argue as anthropologists that it's only by going through those kind of experiences and really seeing how cultures kind of play out in everyday life that we can really understand what's going on. So you learn that they talk about their family and that the way to interact with them is to use the, the way they speak about the world. What happens when you're an anthropologist is that you're keenly aware all the time of the learning process of how to behave appropriately so that you're bringing a different kind of knowledge to age-old questions. These things no one teaches us, we almost pick it up by, by watching and looking and making a few mistakes here and there. What an anthropologist, a social anthropologist, brings to this is uh, a real kind of awareness of trying to understand a culture from within rather than to just project their own sets of ideas onto a, onto a kind of cultural context. These objects still have uh, an intense meaning um, related to the context in which they were made. So, in fact, this is showing a man on the left and a killer whale on the right. It's a, it's a, it's a shapeshifter changing from one form to another. And, and many of the designs continue to be highly meaningful. And one of the contributions that anthropology would make, sort of a wider discussion in the public as well, would be to get people in Britain and in every other country, of course, to understand that the way how they live is not the only way, it's not the best way, and um, that other people's way of looking at the world are equally valid. The whole idea about actually looking at other people is really to be able to look at oneself in, with new eyes in, in many respects. Um, it's through learning about kind of cultural diversity that you actually stop to reflect on what you do yourself and why you do it, what, what it means to you. Anthropology is a, a fantastic subject for students to study and it really unlocks a lot of doors when it comes to, to looking for potential careers. You can do anything you want with anthropology. We have students who go on to do higher study in, in anthropology itself, in academia, who go on to do um, a law course, who go on to do a development um, postgraduate degree, um, who, who enter the health sector, who enter, who, who enter the education sector. We have students who join uh, the Foreign Service, the NHS. Non-governmental organisations, charities, museum work. We have students who've gone on to work for organisations like Sega, carrying out market research about why people like particular types of games. It's a, it's a fascinating subject that really gives you a whole range of skills that you can bring to the workplace. You can do anything you want with anthropology. Anthropology really prepares you for really any career field um, uh, that, that you are interested in. The career choices for people with a good biological anthropology background are incredibly manifold because you've got a good background in science and also in the study of culture in an ideal world. They can study primates, so for example they might want to work in conservation biology, want to work on looking at animal behaviour in zoos or in the wild. They might want to look at human evolution or even into looking at um, modern humans, looking at forensic anthropology. It sets you up not only for career in biological or forensic anthropology, uh, but also uh, any sort of biomedical career as well. If you are working with people, if a job involves dealing with people, then that job requires an anthropologist. If we all uh, had some kind of social, um, anthropological kind of sensibilities, I think the world would be a much better place. Mm -hmm.